Hi, everyone. How are you? Erica M. here. And I am so happy to have you here. I see that the numbers are going up. Lots of people joining in. So great to see you, Tracy. So great to see that you showed up. I hope that John is here as well. Uh, let's get things started here. And let me tell you what's going on. Uh, first of all, I really want to thank you so much for being a part of the chat tonight. Um, tonight, it's all about how to have a no fear gap year. I'm Erica M. I'm the founder of YMC. And I also started a private Facebook group called the Parents of Teens Survivor Group. And you know what? I'm going to put that in the comments right now if I can. And um, hopefully, there it is. I put that in the link for you, in the comments for you. So if you are not a member of this group yet, I highly recommend that you uh, click on that link and uh, ask to join that group. It is fantastic. I, I don't know if there's anybody here who's watching right now who's part of the Parents of Teens Survivor Group, but I know it has been life-saving for so many of us. Um, in fact, it's where I met the guest that is joining me tonight, Michelle Dittmer, Michelle Dittmer, before I bring her in. It's always great for me to, uh, hi, Laura. It's always great for me to know who's here. So I see that Tracy is here and John is there. Laura Kelly, that's great. So great. Oh, is am I really breaking up? That's really bad. You see, it's so weird because for me, it looks fine from my end. Uh, I'm not really sure why. Let me, I think if I take my, um, going to try and take the Wi-Fi off of my phone. So hopefully it'll be better. Carla, thanks so much for joining. Sarah, uh, what I love to see is, Robin, that's great. I'm so glad you're here. It's great to see who's here. And also it would be really interesting for me if you tell me, um, are, your, are you interested in a gap year for uh, your, your child, your teen, for this year? or for coming years. It's just interesting to know who's joining us. So um, if you want to pop that into the comments, it'll be it's just interesting for everybody to kind of get to know each other and to see where everybody's heads are. Um, as for why I'm hosting, it's actually personal because my daughter, um, well, last year because of COVID, which was essentially a shit show, um, so my daughter and I decided that it would be best for her to take the year off. And, um, okay, so Andrew's in grade 11 um, next year. Okay, got it. Uh, possibly next year. Your teen is interested for next year. It's so great um, that you guys are, are thinking about this now to get your head wrapped around. And also when you meet Michelle, you'll be so grateful that you joined today because she's such a wealth of information. So my daughter and I decided that um, it would be best for her to take a year off, partly because of COVID. Like, I think that the universities are still messed up. And uh, I really wanted my daughter to have the full university experience. And right now, from what I hear, it's, it's still not back to normal. So I'm glad that she took the year off. And also, come on, she's only 17. Like she's, she is now in a gap year. She's finished grade 12 and she's still only 17. So I'm thinking you're too young. So the, the idea of a gap year for her was also to grow up a bit and to have some cool experiences. And that's literally how I met Michelle. So let me bring in Michelle right now. Michelle, uh, I, I brought, I, I reached out to Michelle and I was like, Michelle, help! <laughs> Michelle Dittmer is the co-founder and president of the Canadian Gap Association. And she's also super cool and very knowledgeable. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping, Michelle, that you're looking at all the comments that are pouring in so you get a sense. We're getting a lot of people in grade 11, a lot of people in grade 12, um, people, a lot of people considering the concept of doing a gap year. So this is where we need your expertise. 
Um, so the first, well, the first thing that I want to ask you is, like, what is a gap year technically? Yeah, I think that's a, a great question because a lot of us are operating on the uh, the Hollywood definition or the Instagram version of what a gap year is, where you see this well-to-do family, um, young, blonde, put on a backpack, head around the world, save the children in Africa. Um, and, and that's sometimes the way that we kind of think of a gap year when the reality is, is it's so much more than that. Um, and it's not limited to that demographic or that archetype. Uh, but really, it's an intentional pause on formal education in order to get some real world experience, um, whether that's working or volunteering or traveling. Um, but it's to get some some life skills uh, before going into post secondary or taking a break mid post secondary. Um, so it doesn't have to happen at any one particular time. But it's that intentional pause to achieve your own goals, whatever that is outside of a formal classroom. That's interesting. So Anne uh, says sh that uh, her son is year two of gap year. Mm -hmm. but her son knew university wasn't for him in college and he decided he couldn't handle online. Um, and he's still confused as to what to do. And so Anne, this is a perfect conversation for your son because I, I believe that you know, tell me if I'm wrong, but gap year is a year of exploration, really. And it could be an exploration from your own home. It could be exploring the world. I mean, tell me, in what do you see the gap year being for the majority of people? Yeah, I call it your risk-free trial on life. Um, and I use the analogy of the ND mattresses. I don't know if anybody's bought a mattress online, but like that just blows my mind. Why would you pay for something that you got to sleep on every night? You can't test it out. But the reason we're comfortable doing that is because there's a return policy. You can get your money back if it's not the right fit for you. <laughs> and that's what a gap year is. You get to test things out, whether it's different career paths, uh, build your independence, try living away from home for the first time, um, exploring what it's like to earn money, all of these, these skills that are foundational to being a successful adult, uh, you get to try it out and test it out. And if it doesn't work for you, you just say no, thank you and move on instead of being roped into a four year university program or $5,000 in tuition fees, you have that opportunity to experiment, to learn, and then to step back if it's not the right fit. So it, it really is like you were saying that exploration and, and testing the waters. Um, so you can send that ND mattress back if it's not right, instead of being committed to something that uh, that that is going to not serve you in the long run. So Donna is asking if this will be live after. Yes, this stays archived on the YMC Facebook page. So Donna, you can go and do what you uh, what you need to do and um, hang out with your son who's in grade twelve, and then you can come back and watch this when it's when it's done. But I am curious. This is such a really niche topic and a niche. I guess you'd call it business. The, mm -hmm. This gap here. How did you end up starting the? the gap association yeah so i started out my career as a high school science teacher uh, biology chemistry and um what i found that was in the classroom the students weren't getting what they fully needed um there's been a big push towards um curriculum and tests and scores and even extra curriculars for the sake of building a resume rather than discovering who you are as a person. And so all of those developmental pieces of coming of age, um, they kind of disappeared and, and we put them on this fast track or this conveyor belt of education. Um, and so I looked and tried, tried to figure out how can we adapt this system. And, and I looked at it from the outside and I said, well, what's happening around the world? Where are people making space for this development? Where are kids getting the opportunity to try things out and to develop the adulting skills that they need in order to be successful? Because we're not giving that to them either in the schools or through the selective extracurriculars that they're taking on. 
And so this idea of gap years kept coming up which was so fascinating. And why was that not a thing in Canada? What is it about the Canadian culture that kind of says, no, 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 you get on that conveyor belt and you go and you do not stop until you have a degree under your belt. Um, and a lot of the what I uncovered was that people just needed permission. People needed somebody to say, you know what? It's going to be okay. Your kid needs a break or wants a break or needs to discover more or needs to mature even. Um, whatever that that impetus is for taking a break, um, it will be okay. Um, and I think that's a large role that I play is, is just legitimizing it and say, no, here are the skills that they're going to develop over the course of this year. Here's how they reintegrate after their gap year. Here's how you build in accountability here's how you track progress um, and here's how they can get clarity on their next steps and so it was really just a, a, a gap to fill you know pun intended I guess <laughs> there um, but it was it was something that I knew that families needed as they needed somebody to curate resources and to answer their questions so that they felt more comfortable doing it because it is an uncharted pathway um, and it's very overwhelming. Like I'm sure you've been feeling um, there when when your daughter came up with this idea and you talk through it. There are so many unknowns and so many variables and um, even guidance counselors aren't fully equipped with the answers to those questions. So that's interesting, right? Because mm -hmm. it seems because it's sort of a relatively new phenomenon that it's that it's being legitimized that I don't, that's such an interesting thing. And I wonder if anybody here, anybody who has joined in has noticed that or had that conversation with a guidance counselor. And I wonder if a, a guidance counselor has been at all helpful because mm -hmm. this is information that I think that kids absolutely need, especially. Now let's talk, I was going to say, especially because of the pandemic. Yeah. And Laura is actually really saying in the chat here that she's a high school teacher um, and she's feeling that grade 12s are really not ready, but they're being pushed by their parents, um, which I think is, is, is also something that, that we see. So it's great to have people like Laura speaking from the educator perspective as well. Now, what, what, now is she saying that parents are being, or parents are pushing the kids to attend university or to mm -hmm. take the year off? To attend. Ah. It's, it's a big push because there is still this social stigma around taking time off um, and that parents measure their success and their self-worth around what their what their kids are doing. Um, yes, and sometimes yes. when they don't have the language to talk about, well, my kid's taking a year off and that doesn't mean they're failing. That doesn't mean they're behind. That doesn't mean I'm a terrible parent. It means that they are mature enough to recognize that they need something different right now. Um, but but the parents want to see their kids succeed. And we've created such a strong narrative that says university equals success. University equals happiness. And 30% of the people I work with are people who have been pushed into school and then flunk out because they're not ready. They're in the wrong wow. program. Um, and they come to me and they come to me with all this baggage where they say, university isn't for me, I can't hack it. When the reality is they were just in at the wrong time or in in the wrong program or kind of jumped the gun and, and got in before they were actually ready. So I think that's a, that's a great point. Now you guys, you can throw in any questions that you wanna ask Michelle, because as you can tell, she is a wealth of information. Tracy says, She's scared that her son won't go to school mm -hmm. after taking a year off. And I'm sure that's a very common issue. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and I think that that's that's one of the number one fears from parents um, because we we work so hard to to build them up for a successful life. And so any deviation from that, we, we worry that we're putting their future in jeopardy. Um, and we know the statistics around higher education equals better salary equals like long-term financial gains, happier life, all of those things. But what we what people don't know is that 90% of people who take a year off return back to post-secondary. Oh, um, great. It's, okay. it's a huge number statistically, um, but I know all the parents out there saying my kid is in that 10%. Like I know that's my kid. Uh, but if you actually look at the number of students who drop out of first year university, it's 14% nationwide they drop out of first year. So I would say that that 10% that take a gap year and don't return 
is the same student as somebody who enters first year and it's not for them anyways, and they're going to take a step back. So um, if, if post-secondary is in the cards for your kid, they're going to make it whether they go directly from grade 12 or from a gap year. Okay. And, you know, it's funny because Carrie was saying here that her 19 year old took a gap year and then decided not to continue his formal education. And he's still sitting, um, st still sitting on it, I guess, mm -hmm. considering. So how does a gap year help someone decide what their path will be in university? Mm -hmm. So a gap year, like I said, is, is a time of exploration and it's really an opportunity to see what you're interested in or find the thing that you're interested in. So sometimes people come and they have a hundred things they want to be. They want to be a doctor. They want to be a lawyer. They want to be a librarian. They want to be a teacher and they don't know which pathway they really want to, to do. And then we have other people um, that come completely with no direction or no idea saying like, I don't know, I was, I was good in gym. Like, what can I do with gym? Um, yeah. And so it, it gives them a chance to explore things a little bit more deeply, um, get out and talk to people in different jobs, talk to a gym teacher, talk to a sports manager, talk to somebody who runs a sports bar, talk to somebody who is a physiotherapist, talk to somebody who is well, a wait a second. Coach. Why just talk? Why don't you actually go and work with them because mm -hmm. you have a year off? Forget yeah. the talking. Yeah. Well, the talking, talking is for... the talking is the opening of the door because mm. a lot of people aren't going to post gee, a professional coach and I need a, a volunteer. That, that That's just not on Volunteer Canada's website. So opening that door and having those conversations and saying, I'm curious about your path because everybody has an ego and they're passionate about what they do. So if a young 18 year old said, tell me about your job, tell me about what you do in that conversation, they're going to say, Hey, this kid, this kid knows what's up. Let's bring them on. Um, so if they don't come forward and say, would you like to come in and shadow me? Or would you like to come intern? Or would you like to come work at my front desk? Uh, the young person can then ask and get out there and say, is, is that something um, that would be possible? Could I come in? Could I work for you? Could I do these things? And it um, and it allows them to build that relationship and build their network before they even get into university. So Laura is asking a really interesting question, which is, would you recommend that students apply for college and university while they're still in high school and then defer their acceptance or do what my daughter did, which is not apply. Mm -hmm. And she's now going to go through the process of application during her gap year. Yeah. Well, the, the, so... First of all, I just for those who don't know what a deferral is, um, a deferral is if you've been accepted to a post-secondary institution, um, they've, they've said, great, you're in, welcome to the school. What you can do is you can apply for a deferral, which is basically saying, thank you, I'd love to come to your school, but I'm not ready for September 2022. Can I come September 2023? And it is at the discretion of the school and of the program, whether they say, yay or nay to that. So it's not universal, but I think everybody should be aware of it. So my recommendation is if you, if your kid knows which direction they want to go in, they know the programs that they're interested in um, and you've done your research and that school and that program has a deferral policy that's pretty clear. Um, then I say, by all means, apply in your grade 12 year and get it on the books, get that deferral. You've got that safety blanket that you've got somewhere to go. You don't don't have to stress about it while you're on your gap year. Mm. Um, and you also have the support of your guidance counselors in the high schools for that application period. Um, that being said, it also acts sometimes too much as a safety net and people get freaked out that uh, they're not doing what all their friends are doing and they can default into going to school even though their heart is really set on a gap year. So that would be the, the con to doing it while in grade 12. 
But I would say if you don't know what you want to do, then apply on your gap year. So don't apply in your grade 12 year. Um, don't stress out about it. You commit to your gap year. Um, and then in the first half of your year, really front load it with all of those exploratory um, career oriented experiences that you want to have and apply in that grade 12 year. Um, your grade 12 yeah, marks, or sorry, in your, you know, on your gap year. Um, and your grade 12 yeah. marks will count exactly the same for the application process. So you would just be your 75 in biology would be going up a 75 of the following year's grade 12 class. So there's no quota, there's no penalty. Um, you're just coded as an out of phase student, which means you're not coming directly from grade 12, but same, same. So there's no sort of nothing against you or a student like, cause my daughter's about to do that. And so mm -hmm. we are worried about that, that they're thinking, Oh, well, you know, she's a lazy kid. She took a year off. Like, so let me ask you this. How do you, indicate that the, that this child teenager young adult chose to do a gap year and that they have benefited from taking that year off is there a way of showing that when you're applying for university yeah so it shows up if there is a supplemental application process uh, or if there is a portfolio like your daughter um, mm -hmm. if there is some sort of additional documentation that goes into it um, quite frankly if it's a grades based program they're going to look and they're going to see 75 and it doesn't matter if you were coming from grade 12 or on a gap year they're just putting it into an algorithm it will com okay. compute all the numbers and take the top 30 or whatever that is. Um, so if it's just a numbers based program, there's no way of, of doing that. Um, but if you there is a supplemental application, think of all the additional stuff you could put on that application of uh, because of the things that you experienced on your gap year. And that's where we see a lot of success for competitive programs is you want to get into like a pre med program, well, heck, on my gap year, I uh, worked in a doctor's office and I volunteered overseas uh, with an immunization clinic and I did X, Y, Z that allows them to really bolster that that supplemental application. Right. Uh, Kelly has an interesting question here that uh, her daughter is wondering that if she takes a year off, her roommate might be a year younger and she wants she's wondering if the university takes that into account when they're pairing people up? Um, not usually. Um, if there was like a larger age gap, um, then, then they would if you were like considered a mature student and you were coming in at 25 or 30. And if you were still applying to residence, they have mature residences for, for folks who are a fair bit older. Um, for the single year difference, they tend not to make too much accommodations for that. But I've spoken with a lot of gap year alum and age really doesn't matter. Once you're in university, you look around your your room and you don't even know if they're 20, 30, uh, 25, 19, 18, whatever it is. Um, the only piece would be like in Ontario, the drinking age. Um, if your roommate can't go out and you can, uh, but you're going to find the people that you're going to be hanging out with and the, the social activities that you want to engage in regardless. And, and that's what the alumni say. Um, so if you want to listen to the, one of our podcast episodes, we've got tons of alumni that talk about that return to post-secondary after and how it was different for them. Okay, now we promised everybody and you promised me that we would talk about how to have a no fear gap year. Mm -hmm. So we're we're not just talking about, you know, taking your off and like going to work at a doctor's office. There are I mean extraordinary things that are available and I will say the reason why I wanted you to come on here <laughs> with me is that when we met, so this is what you do, right? People will apply through the can gap website and you have a free consultation with people um this is a nonprofit, by the way so just so people know this and you have this conversation and you sort of interviewed my daughter and asked her what she was into and then you started whipping off these amazing experiences that are potentially available to her because of you michelle my daughter will be probably spending three weeks in Costa Rica um, surfing and learning uh, videography and Spanish. And like when no, you were talking, don't. I was like, don't tell her that. But it was too <laughs> late. It was out of your mouth. And so she is going to go. But she'll be traveling by herself. You know, she's excited, terrified. And 
those are the kinds of things that, you know, the, I wouldn't know about, but you just whipped them out. So I'm going to put you on the spot and tell, and like, just brainstorm and tell me the kinds of things that are out there, like the fun stuff, the no fear, you know, life, not maybe not life changing, but certainly um, experiences that will make their friends green with envy kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, there's something for everyone, which I think is really interesting. There's no cookie cutter. There's no formula for it because everybody's coming with different goals. Right. Um, and that's really the first secret to a no, gear, no fear gap year is you have to have something you want to get out of the year whether that is clarity on your future, whether that is de-stressing, whether that is learning Spanish, whether that is starting a business. So whatever those goals are, that really helps to shape all of the activities that are there. So there's everything from um, internships abroad. If you are really into, um, I don't know, there's a, a great program in South Africa with the um, LGBTQ plus uh, community out there and supporting um, all the initiatives that's happening in South Africa. You can um, you can get certified to become a mountain bike engineer or like service person out in Whistler. You can um, work in all of the different resorts across the country. So seasonally, you move from Muskoka to Whistler to Banff to Vancouver Island. Um, you can uh, build a portfolio on a little farm in Ireland. You can um, you can work on your physical strength and enter into a bodybuilding competition. You can do anything <laughs> under the sun. We've got uh, a young girl right now, uh, a young woman, I should say, that started her own vegan bakery. Um, in her little small town, there was no, there was nothing there, and she's got that off the ground. Uh, so, so there really, was, there's... there was a girl who is um, figure skating in somewhere in England. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, she, she moved over there and is and is figure skating in England. Her and uh, her boyfriend actually just hopped on a plane to France. And they're doing a, a work away. So work away is an organization that connects you with projects in other countries. And so you can go and help somebody paint their barn. And in exchange for painting their barn, they'll give you food and accommodation for the duration of your stay. So really great way to see the world, to be immersed in the culture, um, and then to, to make travel really affordable as well. So what's happened now with the pandemic? How has that affected the high school university continuum like can can kids still get out there and have fun yes yes so i would say the pandemic has been really interesting for the gap year movement because that traditional idea of a gap year was all travel um and that became less of a reality at the beginning mm -hmm. uh it kind of threw things up in the air for a little bit but at the same time the university experience was not the full-fledged residence frosh week um campus extracurriculars clubs all of those things so um it was it was really just such an incredible shift to see people. Our website traffic spiked. Uh, we were up 1300% in the month of May, 2020. Um, and it's, it's just amazing. But there are so many things that these young people can do, um, whether that is virtually. So there are some incredible organizations that have shifted and pivoted and taken their international experiences and converted them to a virtual experience that's much different than online schooling um, because you're actually in somebody's house in Mexico and they're baking, they're, they're making their tortillas and they're teaching you how to do it and you can build a relationship with that family. Um, but there's also things that are happening domestically. So if you are not comfortable, if your risk profile is saying like international travel still not, I'm not totally comfortable with that. Um, across the country, we have incredible programs. Katimovic um, is a five-month program where you live in two Canadian communities and you do service work and you work um, on truth and reconciliation uh, and you live in community with people from across the country. Um, we've got all of these beautiful mountains where you could go and work out there. You could do conservation work with the Canadian Wildlife Federation. Um, there's so much domestically that's available. And then international 
International is opening up. And so we're seeing mm -hmm. programs open up in Costa Rica. We're seeing programs um, open up in Europe. And so whatever you're looking for, uh, if that is something that you're comfortable with right now, things are happening. And it's just amazing to, to watch the skies open up and see people um, flourishing into all of the opportunities that are out there. So what are the pitfalls of, um, you know, there is that sort of, but what if, what are some of the pitfalls that you would warn, warn families about? Mm -hmm. So I think the, the stalling out is a big fear is that you're going to, they're going to end up on the couch and they're, they're not going to be getting up. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that single gap year is going to turn into a gap decade. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest fears and one of the biggest pitfalls. Um, and so how do we prevent that is, is the, the way that we should be looking at that. Um, and really it is around goal setting and, and seeing progress towards goals so that you can actually mark that you are learning things, developing things, achieving things. And then when those things are achieved, there, there's a push towards a next step. Whether that's entering the workforce, whether that's returning to post-secondary, whatever that is, um, I think that's one of the biggest things is to have those goals and have those milestones, um, build in accountability. So somebody other than mom and dad yes. is going to give them a little poke because like I you have had conversations with your daughter and then I come on and she's like, Oh, Michelle knows what she's talking about. Not you, mm -hmm. mom, mm -hmm. even though it's the yeah. exact same things that are coming out of our mouth. No, um, no, it's not actually you, you know, it is way different because you do have insights that I don't have. And so that's, I mean, that's, you have sort of earned an expertise in this, which is why I defer to you in those conversations. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's interesting though, that when my daughter started her, this is really important for parents to hear, I think, like super important. My daughter had decided that she wanted to do a gap year and I was right there with her. And we had talked about plans. We hadn't spoken to you yet, but we had plans about what we could do potentially and it was the end of August and or perhaps the first week of September and all her friends left and all the, the kids were super excited to head off to university. And my daughter had a full on meltdown and it was what, what's going. She, she couldn't understand why am I not going to university? All my friends are going. And that's when I called you because yeah. I was like. She is having a full on meltdown. She goes, oh, yeah, it's the FOMO. So I think it's really important to talk about that before anybody decides to do this thing called a gap year mm -hmm. to understand that emotional um, reaction when all the other kids pack their bags and head off to their adventures. Yeah. Yeah, I would say the two most difficult times for somebody who's decided to take a gap year, um, number one is in June, when everybody's talking about where they're going next year, what they're doing. Um, at graduation ceremonies, they say so and so is going off to this law school, so and so is going off to this school for engineering. And if you just say you're taking a gap year, and it's like a blank slate, that doesn't feel good. <laughs> it doesn't feel certain, it doesn't feel exciting. And those those feelings of anxiety, um, those feelings of less than creep in because mm. you don't have anything exciting to share and you get left out of those conversations. Um, so having something concrete for September helps them in June in those conversations. Okay. And when they're saying, oh, I'm going off to Guelph for agriculture, they jump in and say, great, I move into Spain and working on an organic farm. And so they get <laughs> part of that and everybody's like, right. whoa, what's, whoa, tell me more about that. So they get included in June. And then in September, like you said, that FOMO kicks in real hard um, and people start doubting their decision to take a gap year. And so having something in September set up for them, whether it's starting an internship, a travel experience, um, starting a, a really cool volunteer placement, whatever it is in September, that gives them that, that sense that they are also moving on in some way. Because September for their whole remembered history has been the new year for them. They've been starting school every year right after Labor Day. And this is the first time for them that that's not happened. You know, um, 
what you're saying to me really is resonating the idea that there are so many parents. I know that probably 80% of the parents who are joining us right now are in grade 11 or their kids are, they're not in grade 11, but their kids are grade 11 or 12. And so they actually do have time to start that planning, that excitement so that you're right in June, they could have some sort of big ideas. And it would be interesting actually to speak to the the high school, whatever. And so when everybody is talking about so-and-so is going off to this university, that they would say so-and-so is going off to Costa Rica to work on an agricultural farm so that they are not um, almost shamed, mm -hmm. right? Or mm -hmm. left out because what they're doing is incredibly valid. If they plan it in advance, they can benefit from that kind of thing. So that's really good in terms of the planning. Yeah. So and I would say you don't have to have your whole year planned at that okay. point um, because they're going to learn and grow and change and discover things about themselves over the course of their year. But having something for September or even having like, I know that I really want to go to Australia. And so even if that, that Australia thing is happening the following May, having something that they can sink their teeth in and something that's going to give them that, that feeling of wow. And that feeling of pride uh, will really, really help them out. Can can you explain to everybody um, what CanGap does? So mm -hmm. you're explaining all these amazing things that people can participate in, but how much help does your organization do? How much work do the parents and the kids have to do with getting this organized? Like, where does all this, where are all the resources for this? Yeah. Yeah. So we're a, a nonprofit organization. So we do our best to get as many free resources out there for families. Um, so we, we offer free 30 minute consultations. So any, but any family at any stage in the game can just ring us up, book an appointment, um, come chat with us. We learn a little bit about your history. Like we had a, a chat about what, what led to it and talked about your daughter's goals for the year. And that gives us as the professionals who, who do this for a living, enough information to point you in some direction. So that's kind of your entry level support. Um, and I'm gonna just pop in and say mm -hmm. that when we did that, you emailed us with a list of about, of the 10 things that we talked about with clickable links so that we were free to then do the research and go deeper on our own. Mm -hmm. so yeah. We provided all those, that was free. Yeah. 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 So, so we have basically an internal Rolodex <laughs> for anybody who remembers Rolodexes uh, or an internal contact list uh, of all of these organizations. We attend conferences, we attend fairs, and we're constantly doing that reconnaissance work so that we're. And when, is, with that. when you do those conferences or those fairs, mm -hmm. what is it called? Is it like, is it experience? Like, what are they for? Experiences or. Yeah, it's everything under the sun. Um, it is uh, things like the Student Life Expo, where they bring different travel providers together. It is the Gap Year Association in the U.S. They hold a conference every year. Um, it is working with educators across the country who have different networks of people. It's working with the federal government and all of the youth programs that they fund. Um, so it's, it's just picking up things here and there and then filing them away for, right. for when we when we meet somebody who who wants to surf and skateboard and is into <laughs> photography and videography we can go oh here's the program about how it's to do so GoPro on and it, it was so <laughs> perfect it was crazy um okay this is a good question by the way uh Karen wants to know when would be a good time to reach out to CanGap for, with a grade 12 uh, mm -hmm. a student right now yeah, great question. Um, I would say whenever you're doing your exploration of all your post-secondary pathways. Um, so a lot of that happens kind of in the November timeframe. Um, all of the university presentations start happening. The college presentations start happening. The guidance counselors are starting to make those pushes to make some decisions and the conversations start to happen because those applications are usually due in January, February. 
Um, so starting in November, um, all the way through till, I don't know, they're already on their gap year and they're behind and they are lost. Um, so if you want to be proactive, I would say, um, the November timeframe or when they have to start making acceptances. So when they've received their acceptances and they have to confirm kind of in the May timeframe, those are when we see a spike in, in requests for, mm -hmm. for little chats. Um, but it can really be anytime we see a lot over Christmas holidays or the winter holidays when family's coming together and like Aunt Lucy's like, so what's university are you going in next year? Um, and we can help navigate those conversations as well. So uh, a friend of mine saw that I was hosting this event. She was supposed to be here. I don't see her here right now, but uh, I want to ask a question on her behalf, which was her daughter is at a university right now and, uh, you know, it's a shit show. So she, all of her courses are virtual. In fact, not even with a live teacher. Can you believe this? It's all video. She's basically learning on her own. Mm -hmm. And she's struggling. For thousands of dollars. <laughs> For thousands of dollars. So she wants to, she's considering pulling out. Mm -hmm. Michelle, do you know what the ramifications of that are? Can, is that considered a deferral? Like, because... She's sort of at her wit's end, and I don't know if you know what to do or mm -hmm. have you experienced this before, but what would you tell, what advice would you give? Yeah, so each university has a formula for how long you're allowed to take to complete a degree. Okay. So often it's like 2.5 times the number of years that it would normally take. Um, so you could have up to like eight or 10 years to finish a four year degree. So each university is going to be a little bit different, but you can reach out to the academic advising team and you can ask for a withdrawal or like a temporary pause on your post-secondary studies. Um, and that's fine. It's even easier than a deferral because they have to give it to you. Um, oh. And basically you just put it on pause and you let them know when you're intending on returning um, and then you then you come back when you are ready and so the the universities are very equipped for this they're um, people do it for illness people do it for financial reasons people do it for mental health reasons um, and they've seen a lot of things like this happen through the pandemic for all of those reasons plus the fact that um, the online university isn't the best way of learning for a lot of people yeah, no, I, I think it's a lot of people are, if not struggling, at least not benefiting mm -hmm. from what I think the university experience really should be. Mm -hmm. So for those people who are um, who are joining us tonight, and obviously they're very interested with, you know, this to explore it more. Um, so CanGap has all these resources. Is there anything else that services, I'm curious about this, that you provide, uh, what you do? Because you had all these parties at the beginning of the year. So, wait, so tell everybody about um, the other services that you guys offer. Again, it's for free. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Gap Year Frosh Week every year um, to deal with that FOMO. These people yeah. feel like they're without a community. They feel like they see all their friends, all of their like crazy Instagram pictures at the big parties or meeting new people or moving into residence. So we offer a similar experience for people on a gap year. So they get to build community. We run really fun workshops. Uh, we bring in like the world's best uh, motivational speakers and uh, just get them really jazzed for their year and replace some of that FOMO with actual excitement. Um, mm -hmm. And we do a lot of those kind of basic gap year planning pieces. Like how do so so you're here now what? How do you get planning? How do you get those activities in there? How do you have accountability for your year? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing. Like there are so many different Facebook or not Facebook groups. Uh, that's for us old people. Um, the, but Instagram groups, they just self-organize. They've got accountability buddies. They are checking in every week on their goals. Like it's, it's such, such a beautiful thing. So gap year frost week is one thing. Um, we do have a membership. So it's a year long membership called the gap year game plan. 
Um, there is a fee associated with this one. It's $500 for the entire year. And um, what that is, is it gives them access to an online Discord community of gappers from across the country. Um, myself and a couple other gap year experts are in there answering questions 24 seven. We've got weekly office hours. We do weekly, um, or, sorry, monthly social events, monthly workshops. We just did one on um, mindfulness without borders last night. So uh, just working on some of those adult. Yeah, my daughter things. should have been there for that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just a really great way for the young people to have access to resources in a very youthful way. It's not stuffy old websites or PDFs. Uh, it's very live and dynamic. Um, and it allows the parents also to have a little bit of peace of mind as well, that there is a responsible adult giving respectable advice um, and helping them to, to mm -hmm. achieve their goals on their gap year. So that would be another thing that, that we offer that's helpful. But we've got a YouTube channel. We've got a podcast out there. We've got all sorts of downloads from how to talk to your parents about a gap year, budgeting templates, gap year planning templates, deciding if a gap year is for you templates. Um, the, the website is just chock full of, of really great resources. Fantastic. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, maybe if you want to type into the comments how people can reach you, I think that would be really useful. I'm going to put in again, this is the teen group. So uh, for those of you who um, are not yet in the teen group, I think I just put it in there. I'm talking and posting at the same time, which is sometimes, conf oh, there it is. So if you're not part of the teen group, I highly recommend that you jump in there. This is a, a private Facebook group for parents of teens. Lots of great conversations. Sometimes these kinds of topics and uh, other ones where our kids are having challenges and we have a safe space to have those kinds of conversations. And you are going to right now, did you type in your URL and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah Robin says, great group. Thanks so much, Robin. Did you type in yet to your, your URL and everything? Uh, um, I, I typed a bunch in the host chat. Is that where I'm supposed to no, do it? No, no, no. There's, do you have in the public chat? Do you don't have access to it? No. It's can gap. Can gap if you go into the host chat, I gave you three links there um, where folks can, if you could copy that over. Um, I'm also happy to answer any questions. We don't have a time to do it now. If you want to leave it in the chat, um, I'll come back and check the chat and I can answer some of them in writing um, as well. Okay, hold on. I'm typing slowly here. I'm going to just do those two. Whoops, I did the wrong one here. <gasps> I put it in the wrong place. Anyway, it's all there in the can gap. So jump in there and reach out to Michelle. She is a wealth of information. Of course, you can always reach out to me or talk to me in the Facebook group and we can have we can continue this conversation in the YMC um, teen Facebook group as well, because this is, you know, once you start having these conversations, people hear it and they go, Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know about it. So, and that's where you and I first met, Michelle. So it is um you know, these community groups are so useful when you, you know, air your questions and what you're looking for, and you never know the kinds of answers that you're going to get. Anyway, I hope all of your kids have a very exciting this year and next year, which hopefully will be their gap year. And I'm hoping that my daughter's is productive and exciting, and I hope that she is safe in Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Michelle, by the way. All right. We'll talk to you all soon. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.